What's up guys, today we're gonna to talk about the rocker drill and why we cue it a little bit differently than most. So a regular rocker drill, the whole idea is get a nice wide base and basically isolate the upper half. So get wide, point the front foot to the target. This is how most coaches cue it. Slight weight shift and then from there, it's simply an arm action isolation drill. The way that we've seen a lot of benefit in using the rocker drill is as a center of mass weight shift drill. So as a lead into drill, right before you get to the walk and windups, to teach guys in kind of a controlled setting how to effectively shift their center of mass. When we're talking about shifting your center of mass, a good way to look at this is looking at hitters. So when a hitter takes his stance, you never see a hitter whose center of mass, in other words, your belly button, which approximates your center of mass, starts over the back foot, which is how you initiate force into the ground. So you're never gonna see hitters starting right here. Rather, they take their belly button, they move it away from their back foot, so that as they load up into their backside, they've created some separation between their center of mass and the place at which they're initiating force into the ground. And that gives them the ability, that separation between the two, to actually have the ability to drive through the ground, through their belly button, through their center of mass, and actually create any reasonable amount of force uh, through their center of mass. So in other words, creating that separation between the two gives you the ability as a hitter to actually put force into the ground. If you start all the way back here, there's no ability to put force into the ground because you haven't created separation between the two. So it's the same idea with a rocker drill. We're creating separation between the back foot, the point at which we're producing force into the ground, and our center of mass, or our belly button. So from this position right here, there's a two and a half foot gap between the two. What we want to do as we rock forward and rock back is not fully load up our center of mass directly over our back foot. That's a position we don't want to get into. The way that we cue it, we do have guys lift that front foot up to more closely mimic their actual delivery, but we want, to, we want them to keep their center of mass relatively far forward inside of that back foot. So an example, as you pick the foot up, you still wanna be able to control and gather yourself without bringing that belly button directly in line with that back foot. So still keeping some gap, some separation, maybe four to eight inches inside of that back foot. So leg lift and go. So you can see it's creating these more dynamic positions. You actually can't hold that peak leg lift position out of the rocker because if you tried to hold it, you're gonna end up falling. But because this is a more controlled drill than just throwing out of your motion, it's a lot more easily reproducible from rep to rep and from throw to throw. So this is what it would look like, in my case, out of a rocker drill, where I'm trying to, as closely as possible, mimic my actual delivery, just with the constraint of this starting foot position. The reason that we have guys lift that front foot up most of the time is because when you have guys stick that front foot into the ground the whole time, you end up having some pretty low level, lower half patterns that arise out of that position. So if you end up allowing guys to keep their front foot on the ground, they end up drifting their lower half forward. And then as they release, they tend to have a very, um, very extreme knee flexion angle through release. Whereas if you allow that front foot, even if it's just slightly off the ground, if you allow it to come up and actually get a load onto the backside, whether it's an abbreviated version like that, or you allow the full leg lift, which is the variation that we prefer, both of those allow for actual high level lower half patterns. Whereas in our experience, guys keeping that front foot cemented down into the ground tends to lead to very little action off the back leg. Front leg just kind of drifts and it becomes an upper half isolation drill. So to recap, the point of the rocker drill in terms of how we cue it is to be athletic. It's to learn how to shift your center of mass. It's to get a nice wide base and make sure that you keep that belly button inside of that back foot as you basically go through what your regular delivery would be. So wherever that leg lift comes, if it's just kind of a slide step version of that, if it's a short leg lift, or if it's a full, you know, leg lift with a full coil, kind of like mine, the point is to keep that belly button inside the back leg, be up tempo, try to keep as much rhythm as you normally have in your delivery, 
and just try to be as fluid and athletic as possible with it. The point is not to be a robot here, it's to learn how to shift your center of mass and it's to do it in kind of a constrained, safe environment that you then take into your walk and wind ups.